Uh, good afternoon and welcome to Access All Areas brought to you by OPSM. Coming up, we're going to talk to Dr Peter Larkins about a very important issue that affects the health of all of our AFL players. But with me now to chat about all the news, views and opinions is Damien Barrett. Welcome to you, Damo. No, Dallas, it's been around a footy to this point where the Premiership race has opened right up. And not uh, quite completed just yet, Damo. Uh, another big game uh, tonight. Carlton taking on St Kilda. If the Blues get up, they can find themselves on top of the AFL ladder. Hey, get involved uh, in Twitter with us uh, live and interactive. Our account at AFL underscore triple A. So send through your questions and thoughts and we will go out, join uh, them right across uh, the show. I want to talk uh, straight away about the biggest loser from the weekend so far, Damo. Is it uh, your team, the Kangaroos, who went down to the Bulldogs yesterday? Is it the Demons, who had a shocker on, uh, on Friday night? The Gold Coast Suns, their shock loss to the Giants. Or is it the Cats getting hammered uh, by the Crows? Uh, working backwards, I reckon the Cats have got enough credit in the bank to not worry about them just yet as the biggest loser. Um, you could certainly make a case for Melbourne, but I think there's almost a who cares factor for Melbourne now from, a, from a people who aren't involved with that footy club, they are just, they're going to go uh, 0 and 12 um, by the time the, uh, they get their break. So, uh, Gold Coast, not a good result for Guy McKenna, but I reckon the biggest loser to this point of round uh, seven was North. Um, just no improvement shown over the past two years. Finished ninth consecutively the past two seasons. Beat Geelong in round three, haven't looked like it since. They've had a win against the uh, Gold Coast in that time frame, but every time they've been challenged. Bulldogs yesterday, West Coast and Sydney Swans way better than them. And uh, I think it's, I wouldn't say it's crisis, but they really need to start getting this stuff together. Yeah, it was a game that you just thought North Melbourne had to win. But I think in terms of impact on the competition, Geelong's loss by 50 points to Adelaide has more meaning, I think, than any of the other four. And, and, and given the way that Adelaide went about it, they absolutely hammered them at, at home. It was bigger than a 50-point loss. Really un Geelong like some of the things yeah. that we saw, and there were probably a couple of instances we could go through. And we might have a look at, uh, at Joel Corey. This is totally out of character for Joel Corey for any Geelong player. Now, look, it might be a trivial thing, but given the bird to the umpire demo, it just lacks discipline. It's not a great look for anyone. This is a club I reckon has had more integrity the way they've gone about yeah. than just about anyone. Is there some signs that perhaps is starting to unravel a little bit down at Geelong? Well, I think, I mean, the way you catch that, uh, so, I mean, you, you, you have raised that in, in the right context in that uh, this is a club that does not do that. And Joel Corey's done that. You, I mean, you can then throw in maybe Matty Scarlett back in round one hitting Hayden Ballantyne and, and maybe even David Ujinski last week just giving um, young uh, Viney a clip in the VFL. Now, not, not for the one that broke his jaw, but the clip on the, on the head. It, just little things have crept into Geelong this year and, and that was not a good look, was it? They've had an amazing run, haven't they? Yeah, they've uh, virtually haven't lost a game for three or four years, three premierships, but uh, we're looking for some signs that maybe it's not, not all going well. Let's look at the top ten, Damo, because it's really interesting. In, in about uh, three rounds' time, it's set in stone. We know that after uh, round 11 or 12, virtually no changes. But looking at it now, Geelong sit outside the eight. It's hard to find someone to, to drop out. Mm. I, I think uh, Essendon uh, absolutely cemented themselves uh, in there. The only one I can look to is Fremantle yep. to swap Geelong over. Uh, but Fremantle's run is, is pretty good and they're going to be really hard to beat at home. Yeah, and that's the point, isn't it? I mean, you, you look at the top eight there and you maybe think Frio, but they've got so many games at home, as, as we know, and they've just been really well coached at the moment. They're going to do what they have to do in most of the games they're expected to win. And I agree, it's, it's, uh, it's going to look unlikely. It's unlikely now that um, that will change too dramatically. Get on board with the Twitter, Damo. I know that you are all over it. And Simeon has tweeted through, at AFL underscore AAA, and he says, uh, the biggest loser, definitely North Melbourne, that took a step backwards to erase any progress they've made in the last two, e two years. No injuries either. No excuses, uh, Damo. Harsh or fair? No, no, very fair. I think it's, uh, it sums up where, where they're at. I mean, they may make an excuse that they came back from Perth the previous week, but that, that would be the only excuse they could make. Um, the contested ball was a, was a real issue to them yesterday and, and one that Brad Scott is analysing now. But they really need to look at themselves north because uh, the improvement, what we've seen to this point of, uh, of 2012, just is not there. Still in my mind, they're a couple of years away from getting that critical mass of uh, 100 game players where they will get the, the consistency. They're the biggest losers. We need to talk about the biggest winners as well, Damo, from, mm. uh, from round seven, of course, one game to go. Was it the Crows' massive win? We should focus on Could the positives be. there. The Bombers, uh, I just thought, was sensational. Uh, the Giants, a bit of history made. Or Richmond, the Tigers supporters, mm. are, they, are they up and about today? I'm going to throw it in as number one, uh, big one of the week is the GWS stars. I mean, I'm happily putting my hand up. I didn't think they'd win a game. Um, and that, look, it, was, it came against Gold Coast. You may say big deal, but it is a big deal. It's a great result for that footy club. You? Who was the oh, Look, I, I, uh, I thought the, the Giants would win one at some stage. So they might win two in a row, to be honest. So they'll play Brisbane this week, and Brisbane are going bad enough uh, you could mount a case. Uh, I love the 
Essendon. And I haven't mm. been convinced about Essendon until sitting there on Saturday night. Yep. Their form at the start of the year, they fell in against North Melbourne yep. in round one, weren't convinced against Port Adelaide or the Giants. They had a good win against Carlton, but there was still some doubt for me about whether they are a serious contender. Can they win it? They can win it. They can win it. And it might be a year, Damo, where, yeah. uh, you know, Doc Larkin's coming up shortly, where injuries play a role. I'm pinching a flag is the wrong word. You never do that. But it's a bit of a war of attrition at yeah. the moment. If Essendon stays strong, they've got their soft tissue injuries out the way. Yeah. In fairness, West Coast have got uh, half their side out and all their forward lines. So they're a bit depleted at the moment yeah. as well. But I love the way they went about it at the Bombers. Yeah. I thought they were fantastic. Darcy, so I haven't seen you as worked up about a topic as our next one for some time. I and might... that is involving Melbourne players post-match. I might be just a bit tired and a little bit grumpy dame after work round up, seven. Like but this is one of my all-time pet hates. Now, Melbourne people might think this is a little bit harsh. They were embarrassing on the weekend. I thought their effort What's your was... problem, though? What, what, what are you saying? Sticking around after the game, you've got players going back. Here's Brett Malone. My rule is you always shake hands with your opponent after the game. That's yep. a respect thing. But you don't hang around as Geordie McKenzie is. Hey, Sam, well played. Great stuff. Let's get back around the uh, the players. Hey, Cyril, uh, great to catch up with you, mate. Thought you were fantastic. Bit of high five, mate. Hey, well played on the weekend. If you're a Melbourne supporter, and again, this is Steph Martin in the stand. Now, people will say to me that I'm being uh, you know, over the top here, but oh, this is a three-quarter time. They are getting hammered. It's not to uh, look at me... He's waved at a crowd. At a crowd shot at the game. If you're a Melbourne fan Honestly. and you're watching the players go around just happy with life, that was fantastic, we're going beautifully. Hey, I reckon half of them want an autograph book out and get Cyril's autograph after. Maybe I could get a two-shot of me and Buddy Franklin after the game. They're not up for it at the moment, but you can actually show a bit of hurt, don't you? You I reckon you've been a bit harsh, Dars. I am, and I'm happy to be harsh, Dave. But it is my pet Martin. hate in there. Do you wave to the game? Oh, that was fantastic. Oh, that was great. I'm on TV, Damo. He should be out there playing, not waving to the crowd. Uh, I reckon we need to just be a little bit uh, stronger than that. Uh, hey, there's a, there's a Sydney player that I admire a lot, Damo, who uh, is another great success, success story and the way they recruit players. But I reckon he needs a bit of an adjustment in his game, Ted Richards, uh, from the weekend. If you look at uh, that one there... there. Of course, Longmire won't be overly wrapped with... Uh, it's just, and you know what? I think the hands in the back wall has been paid so much. Defenders are so used to getting a free kick yep. that Ted just fell over a few times on the weekend. So Revolt's got him a second time in this uh, package. Martin got him as well. Longmire wouldn't like that, would he, Darcy? I mean, this is a guy just not holding his ground. And you can excuse Ted Richards, because I reckon he's just been a star and a gun, but uh, a little bit of a bad habit that crept in, sort of player, and the way their system works in Sydney, they'll address that in about five minutes, and uh, there won't be a problem, we'll move on, but just a little bit of a bad habit creeping in there for Ted Richards. Another tweet, uh, Damo, coming fast and furious here, AFL underscore triple A, and this one's from Steve. He says the biggest winner is Kevin Shetty. The biggest loser, Damo, is the guy who dropped the mark in the crowd. Now, if you don't know what Steve's talking about on the Twitter. Take a look at this guy on Saturday night in the Bombers game. Uh, Cranberry kicks one through. The big fella's had a fair share of Carlton draft, uh, I reckon, at this stage of the game. <laughs> Chinned himself on the third <laughs> row. That could have ended uh, in tears. Not sure that's a smart move but on the first row at Etihad Stadium. You just wonder how, I mean, had he been seated a row closer to the railing, he could have gone over the railing there, does. <laughs> That could have ended uh, poorly. Uh, another one from Tony. The Gold Coast, the biggest loser of the round by far. Surely plenty of pressure on the coach now. Any news on his contract, Dome? Are you all over Bluey McKenna? Yeah. Does that put him in a uh, worse position than he was a week ago? What, what it does, Darcy, is, is create pressure around the whole situation. Now, the strong talk in the past fortnight was that the club had made its mind up that he would be retained, but they couldn't possibly make that announcement this week if that is indeed the case. Um, they have changed their minds a couple of times already, this board, on how they deal with uh, Guy McKenna's future, and not just his future, but um, other senior management positions and even the captaincy and the leadership group of the club. So I reckon they'll just uh, prolong the announcement of where they're at with that. And he, and he wouldn't want another loss like that. Surely if they've done their review and they think he's the right man to coach uh, and that's been yep. all said and done, you yep. can't then go back and change it on the back of one loss. I do agree. But you know and you've been around footy clubs and underperforming footy clubs that the pressure gets to people. And, it, and it, look, it must be have got to, to Guy McKenna. There are certain games that just have to be won by individuals and clubs and that was one that had to be won by Gold Coast and it wasn't. Damo, time for our APSM poll question. Head to our AFL Facebook page to register your vote on who will win a flag sooner. Will it be the Gold Coast Suns or the Giants. The results on the poll can be seen on Friday's edition of Access All Areas with uh, Damo and Lethal Lee Matthews. Who will win one sooner, Damo? Uh, GWS almost certainly. 
Giants ahead of, yeah. uh, like, I hope uh, our boys, North Mel your boys, North Melbourne, or the Bulldogs, but I'm not overly confident. I think the franchise sides are uh, better positioned at the moment. Time for a break, though. We're going to catch up with uh, Dr Peter Larkins next for a chat about a very serious football injury that's going to affect the whole competition. So look, look forward to chatting to Doc. And uh, a reminder, get on to Twitter, AFL underscore AAA, to join in the conversation. Doc Larkins is next.